Good morning, thank you for joining me. Or good afternoon, thank you for joining me. As always, I'm your file player. And I wanted to make this uh, video sort of as a follow-up to the last video I made as to, and the last video I made was about the moves that the zone was doing, um, what I felt about them, which, and um, what moves they could do like to uh, help their company have a lasting power like you know here in uh, america name recognition uh my follow-up video and the video i wanted to do uh, that i think is a more important subject is what the pbc should be doing to counter that and um maybe even help pbc grow um which they're pretty big as it is now as far as the fighter that they have the fighters that they have um in their in their stable but um the reason I'm making this video is because these other companies like Top Rank and more importantly, The Zone, which is kind of like the new player in this, um, not only as far as promoting here uh, domestically in America, but also like they're a new player in presenting a new format in America as watching, um, so, like which is watching fights uh, via an app or purchasing an app to watch fights, which is done uh, via your phone or on your computer. I'm sorry, somebody was uh, parking in front of uh, my neighbor's house. So I gotta, gotta be on the lookout. But, um, um, so yeah, the, um, with uh, Top Rank and um, Matchroom, The Zone, they all, and, and uh, even Golden Boy, at some point, they've all presented a competitive nature to, um, to the PBC. Um, also, they've uh, the when it comes when you're speaking about the zone. I mean, they've made no qualms as far as to try to um, suggest that they wanted to steal fighters from the PBC or have them sign with the the zone and or with Matchroom, whatever have you. And now you're actually seeing that come into effect. Uh, Mikey Garcia just signed with the zone for one fight um, to fight against uh, Jesse Vargas. Not that much consequence in that uh, signing happening. I think it does make a small ripple with the uh, Mexican fight fans. Um, it also does like a little bit of a PR uh, or change the narrative as far as PR goes because um, to the casual fan, like they'd probably say, "Oh, well, Mikey Garcia signed with the Zone," and it may maybe if they didn't like read into it, like it would seem like it's a done deal and he's there forever. Um, which I think those are smart moves that the zone does like signing a guy for one fight. And then you could always say like, or it always seems to the, to the non savant or to like somebody who's casually watching that that fighter may always be there forever. And that's the only way you could uh, watch that fighter. Um, there's also rumors that the zone may be looking to sign Andy Ruiz, which, uh, and that's one of the reasons that I wanted to make this video. Because that news kind of pissed me off. Um, <clears throat> because uh, this fucking dumb motherfucker parks his car behind me, bro. I can't stand shit like that, man. Like, it's mad space on this block, bro. Like, nobody, like, whatever. But, um, um, as far as uh, the perception goes, with uh, Andy Ruiz, I was kind of pissed off about that, or more worried about that to a degree, because Andy, like um, Andy Ruiz, would have presented a good opponent for somebody on the PVC side. You know, you got somebody that, um, you know, has Mex that Mexican fight fan base and the uh, fanfare of having just beat Anthony Joshua in their previous fight in June, um, which unfortunately he came back in the rematch and lost to Anthony Joshua. So if you would have presented that scalp to uh, say a um, um, Count Aki, like who's signed to the PVC, Luis Ortiz, who's who's sort of signed to the PVC as well, from what I know, or Deontay Wilder even, like that would have been a good look. Like you know, then you have somebody who's like a common opponent, but not only a common opponent, but also somebody who beat um, Anthony Joshua in their previous fight. So if uh, Deontay Wilder were to go in there and dispatch of uh, Andy Ruiz um, in a more um, definitive fashion, which I think he would do, 
you know, it would just present a good look. But then instead of doing that, you know, if Andy Ruiz were to say sign with the zone um, or with Eddie Hearn, then those fights with the PBC guys don't happen. Then that illusion of like, you know, oh, well, like Luis Ortiz never fought nobody or Deontay Wilder's resume, whatever, whatever. You know, I just think it makes the, 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 the divide like wider. You know, I don't like for um, if the fights ultimately get made, then it's a it's a moot point. If it has to be a 50 50 ordeal. Or like a split that doesn't favor me. Don't give a shit either because it's not my money. But um, it seems like in the past um, uh, that those things as far as negotiating and as far as splits, as far as resume, like, you know, those things have stopped the fights from happening. Like where people will bring that stuff up and um, they'll make it seem like, you know, Deontay Wilder, for instance, has to take like way less money to fight um Anthony Joshua because his resume doesn't stack up. Well, like when you're proactive, like PVC should be proactive, and uh, sign somebody like that, or like not let them jump over to the other side of the uh, of the um, their competitors, then um, you kind of like stop that notion. And uh, ultimately, it's about like not letting your competitors live. This is all big business. You know, I get like pissed off when people say, "Oh, well, Al Heyman's a, a advisor." I don't give like two cents about that. Frankly, I'm trying not to curse because I don't want to get um, hated on by, by, with my channel. But, um, you know, um, if he's an advisor, then advise him not to go there. Or, like, you know, whatever they offer, like, offer 500000 more or, or a, a million more and don't let it happen. I mean, sometimes you got to pay the cost to be the boss. And boss moves are not letting your competitors live. Like, if match room, like, which I feel it is the case... Um, is stopping fights from happening, like where like fighters have to go over there or else, or uh, or um, you know, um, it it's just it it's it, since it's been here. I mean, I, I and I think a little bit of that is changing because they're signing fighters to like one one fight deals and whatnot, and like you know, fighters are kind of like getting them for money because uh, Jesse Vargas, Mikey Garcia fight, um, in today's like terms, is not worth like eight million bucks. But, you know, do you? I'm glad he got his money. But, you know, the danger lies more in if Mikey Garcia were to stay at his own, like, next fight. Like, now they're, like, kind of, like, chummy. Same thing with Andy Ruiz. Like, I mean, like, if he were to sign, which is just a rumor now. Um, and even if it's not a rumor, it's a possibility. Like, um, what if he finds comfort in fighting um, lesser than opponents for a lot of money there? Like, you know, he still has a lot of clout with the uh, Mexican fan base. If he um, chooses to stay uh, with the zone because they're willing to cough up a lot of money, um, you know, then that kind of like takes a negotiating chip or a big, a viable name from the the arsenal and puts it in the uh, in the side of the ops. Like you know, why let your ops live? Like um, you know, it's it's it, it's it's very it's simple mathematics, but like sometimes like I think the PBC takes a very dumb approach to things like where it's just like, you know, we'll let things happen. And like, you know, uh, and a lot of times, like, it seems like they have a plan, but you know, I could, I got to chalk it up as either um, their moves that they do sometimes are stupid by letting, you know, these fighters like, um, you know, walk like Andrade being a good uh, example or uh, well, Andrade was never signed to the PVC, but they should have, they should have snatched them up, snagged them up. Or, um, or Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia is a big name, man. I mean, like you know, even like before, like the Errol Spence loss. I mean, like I, I could, you, I gotta argue that Mikey Garcia is a top ten name, not top ten fighter. Like I don't have him top ten pound for pound, but he was in the pound for pound list prior to that loss. But as far as name, um, record, you know, viability, um, you know, that second rung below. Canelo, as far as Mexican stars, Mikey Garcia is right there. I mean, like you know, it's it, you know he has to be number two or or competing with number two. And Mikey, and you know, when you look at Canelo, he to me he's a declining like um commodity. You know, when you got like somebody like Mikey Garcia or um you know um with that potential for growth, you know um that that's uh, somebody you want to keep like in the fold. Then there's also like you know Eddie Hearn mentioning that they want to do Mikey Garcia Pacquiao in um in um Saudi Arabia. 
the fight location, I don't care where they do it. Like, you know, any any fight. Like, I'm, I wasn't tripping too hard on the fact that um, that Ruiz Joshua um, happened in um, Saudi Arabia. With the exception of, I thought, like, maybe some shadiness was going to happen. But as far as, like, you getting paid for fighting anywhere, doesn't matter to me. Like, you can fight in hell. Like, let the devil pay you out. Like, you know, I don't... Like, you know, I like fighters to get their money. Um, but if the zone gets that fight... I, like, you know, it's going to really piss me off, like, you know, to say, like, for the excuse to be, like, you know, well, like, Al Heyman doesn't going to get involved in that stuff, and, like, you know, he's just an advisor, he wants fighters to make their money, yeah, they, I, I want fighters to make their money, too, but I just don't like for the ops to make money, or the ops to have that, um, that, uh, bargaining clout, or whatever have you, or a chummy relationship with these fighters, one iota, and I think a lot of that stuff happens because PBC's approach to the things, to stuff, it's not a, uh, it's, like I said, it's either, um, it's either dumb, like their approach to things, or they don't have a plan at times. Like, I think like, you know, they may have a plan at the very top rung and sometimes those things don't pan out like the way I think they could pan out. Like, I think they could have done better. Um, they could have had like make better plans with, in, 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 with Deontay Wilder as an example. Like I thought they could have, um, recently done better things as far as his career goes like um like to take um he could have done i just i don't want to get into that right now but uh you know and and deontay wilder's my my dude and my favorite fighter you know i love the dude but um i think like kind of like they don't take a uh very smart approach to things like you know and this is 2020 like i'm not gonna you know like do i want the pvc to win like you know Yes, because, like, I want them to win only in the sense that, like, the fighters there seem to be happy and, like, everybody seems to be making money. Like, that's fantastic. But their approach to things at times, one, it doesn't net me with the fights that I want. Like, you know, it, like, a lot of the fights that are happening are not fights that I was necessarily, like, uh, calling for. And, you know, um, it don't, it, like... Uh, when with Wilder being on the PVC, it, it works more so because Wilder's forcing the issues with the fights that like I want. And a lot of the times, like if those fights don't get made with Wilder, I know it's not his fault. You know, um, it's like people like um avoiding him. But uh as far as like all these other people on the roster, like I mean those fights, like a lot of them like don't really resonate with me. I mean like with the exception of the fights that like sort of have to be made. Like Harrison Charlo, fantastic fight. Harrison Charlo won. I thought like they could have won a different direction, but you know, it was still a competitive fight, and uh, you know, and Charlo lost the favorite loss, and they had to run it back. So I guess it worked out in that sense. But um, I don't know. I just think that you know, with a little bit of push or a little bit of motivation on the PVC side, maybe dishing out more more, uh, more money for a lot of these fights too, that like great great fights could get made and um. It would really like suffocate the competition too when you have great, great fights and the competition has, you know, these like kind of like running on fume fights. And I think the PBC could force that like by, you know, again, dishing out a little bit more money if you have to uh, for these fights to be made or, or um, and um, not letting your competitors get a, a hold of like your, uh, your, your prized possession with char these fighters. Um, I'm going to talk more about this issue because it, 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 uh, it wears on me, you know, and this is kind of like a stance I've always had, like, you know, but, um, yeah, I, I'll touch on it more cause I got to go to shop, right. And I'm going to see what's up with this, uh, dipshit that parked behind me. Um, well, let me let you guys go. I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas and Christmas Eve. If I don't make videos, I got to run to shop, right. And get some uh, material to make. And I got to get a bottle of rum as well. But, uh, yeah, thanks for joining me as always. If I don't see you, like, drive safe. Peace.